My name is Devin Olson. Uh, I'm from Fort Collins, and uh, this video is going to show uh, m one of my favorite stonefly names that I call the Buy It Back Stone. So we first start with a uh, size 10 jig hook. Um, I've got a three millimeter slotted tungsten bead on here, although uh, you can use all the way up to uh, four millimeter on this size of hook. Uh, this is just sort of a medium weight nymph uh, for you know a lot of the, the medium sized rivers around here. You can vary this all the way from lighter to this, or lighter than this, all the way up to you know a bomb if you want. I'm also going to add. Uh, about six or seven wraps of 20 thousandths lead wire. Just make sure that slides up against the bead. And then I've got camel brown A dot uni thread that we're using for this fly. And always make sure you cover that thorax of lead up really well so it doesn't slide around on you. The minute that starts moving that'll really decrease the durability of your fly and you don't want that. And obviously uh, make sure you lay down a good thread base as well. Now the ribbing for this fly, uh, in this video I've got uh, brown D-rib. I actually like uh, brown V-rib or vinyl rib a little bit better in a midge or small size because it's a little less stretchy, but uh, this will work. And I've got uh, ginger hair's ear for the dubbing. So basically I've just attached my ribbing and now I'm going to begin the dubbing. You don't want to make a terribly thin noodle because on these uh, stone flies you want just enough heft to the body that it'll the, the bites that I'm going to put over the back, you don't want them to slide off. So you want a fairly bulbous abdomen. You can see I've got, I don't know, two and a half, three inches of fairly thick dubbing there. And I'm going to cover it right up to the back side of that lead. Now I've got uh, some rusty brown goose biots here and let's see if we can get a couple good ones. Looks like this one must have gotten hammered <laughs> in my tying bag so uh, I can probably get a couple little work here though. You want good clean tips on these, these are a little ragged. But if they're beat up, you can always trim them with your simmers or with your scissors to, to make them better. Now, uh, on this fly, these are going to form the shell back of the stone fly. So I'm going to measure this out so that they are extending maybe a quarter inch past the back of the hook, and have them with your if you're right-handed, take your thumb and your index finger align these parallel over the back then switch to your left thumb and have that anchor it down and go ahead and make a couple of thread wraps and then you're gonna move them around so that you try and get them right on top of this fly adjacent to each other that's important because if you don't have them right next to each other then they'll tend to slide off the edges of the fly as, as you put the ribbing on so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that thread where it is for now take the ribbing and you want to make your first wrap with the ribbing just a little bit into the back of the dubbing if it's off the back of the hook then your biots on the on the back which are also going to form your tails will slide and rotate and they'll either cross each other or they'll flare too much out to the side so you've got to make sure you take that first rib of dubbing or uh, the first rib into the dubbing just a little bit so that it doesn't slide And once you have that first bit, just go ahead and crank it on forward. And what you'll see is that we have a nice little two-toned effect where the bottom of the stonefly is a ginger color and then that darker rusty brown forms the bias for the back. And 
those tips should look nice uh, like a typical stonefly tail on the back. Now because this is a size 10, I can actually use the biots for the rest of the wing case. Um, if you were tying this on an 8 or 6, you'd probably have to re... Well, actually those are kind of short, so I'm just going to go ahead and reattach some others. You can either, if, you, if they are long enough, you can often get away with just folding them back and using them as the wing case, but they were a little bit short. So just go ahead and grab a couple more. Tie them in by the butts, but very close to the butt so that you have the widest part of the biot at the tie-in point. I'm just going to clip off the, the base of them. All right, so now I'm going to take a strand of, uh, this is kind of rusty brown or uh, something similar, span flex. You could use flexi floss as well. I like the span flex or the flexi floss because they don't rot in your fly boxes like some other rubber legs do. Um, and then I'm just going to, if, if you've got a rotary vise, rotate that side right up uh, so that it's perpendicular to your eye. Do the same thing I did with the biots. Come and measure with your right hand here and then take your left thumb and rotate over and anchor it against the side of the fly. And then you want to do a little bit of a pinch wrap, so put a wrap of thread in between your thumb and index finger and don't cinch it until you've already come with the thread uh, almost all the way back around on the, on the rotation. And what that'll do is make sure that the rubber stays exactly in the place where you want it. If you cinch it as you are wrapping it around, it'll tend to roll, roll the rubber on top of the fly. As you tie this off, you want to butt that, that span flex right up against the bead, and you can manipulate it a little bit so that it stays in line with your back leg. But if you get it right up against the bead, it'll help flare it out so that it uh, isn't just pointing straight forward. Now on the, the far side, I'm actually going to take the rubber leg and tie it in a little bit above um, where, or just slightly towards the top of the fly because no matter if I use a pinch wrap or not, on the far side it seems that the leg likes to rotate regardless of what I do. All right, so we've got a nice little set of rubber legs here. I would say tie them in a little bit long to begin with. You can always cut them off, but it's pretty hard to make them grow again. Just take the same dubbing that you had for the abdomen. Make the first little bit a, a kind of thin. We're actually going to use that to prop out the back legs. And then you can go into a fatter bit of dubbing for the rest of the thorax. So make one or two wraps a little bit thin and we're just going to lay it on here. And the first thing I'm going to do is take the near rubber leg, pull it towards me and make sure I get a wrap of dubbing behind it. Do the same thing on the far side and as you can see that's propped out those, dub those legs nicely whereas before they were more par parallel to the body. And then just fill in this thorax. Bring the thread in front of those front legs, right up behind the bead. And then just bring your biots back over the top for your wing case. And again, the hardest part with this step is to make sure you get those biots right adjacent to each other. And I didn't actually do a very good job of that because you don't want a big gap of dubbing showing through since these are supposed to be your wing pads. Now you can do one of two things here. You can uh, clip, this, clip these off and try and make some antennas out of them. Clip them flush or you can actually fold these back and make some wing pads out of them. 
I tend to do that. So after I've uh, folded them back, when we finish the fly, we'll clip those at an angle. Now typically when I finish a fly, I like to actually put glue on before I make my whip finish. So this is just some brushable super glue, zap a gap or something similar would be fine. Put glue on a couple inches of the fly. And you can make three or four wraps to begin with so that, that glue gets under all the thread. And that way when you actually go and whip finish the fly, there's glue throughout the knot and it's a more durable finish instead of just putting glue on afterward and hoping it soaks through the whip finish. All right, so I'm gonna take these wing, these uh, biots and trim them off like a wing pad. You can try and angle them a little bit like the naturals have if you really care. And then I'm gonna try and get these legs to be the same length. Okay, so that's the finished buy it back stonefly. You'll see we have this nice dark back and this lighter undertone body. Uh, works great as a golden stone pattern. You can tie it in bigger sizes and dark, uh, dark colors for salmon flies. You can also tie these in blonde colors because uh, oftentimes in March or April in the, in the spring, some of the flies that are gonna hatch that year go through their last instar or molt and they turn uh, blonde for usually a few hours uh, during the day they molt and at that time they're nice and juicy and the trout tend to like them. So I tie this in all sorts of colors. You can also do squala variations. Um, just whatever colors match your local stonefly.